Frederick the Great's characteristic inspiration and stubbornness show in his summer palace Schloss Sanssouci. His sketches for a small Rococo flourish, based on ten principal chambers, suited his informal ethos. But the king's ideas for the palace met resistance from his architect Georg Wenzeslaus von Nobelsdorf, who protested about its site and impracticalities. Frederick was no slave to fashion, his ideas won out, and Nobelsdorf was eventually sacked, retiring to a Grand Potsdam townhouse in cold internal exile. Schloss Sanssouci translates as palace without cares, though the true meaning of Sanssouci is much debated. Sons, comma, Sousi is inscribed beneath the dome. As a ruler of the period, Frederick preferred French. The palace was seen through to completion by the Dutchman Jan Bauman. Frederick the Enlightenment thinker required five guest rooms, one fitted out for his friend Voltaire, and a private library. Frederick the Flautist required an ornate concert chamber. The artist in Frederick also demanded a picture gallery. His favorite painter was Antoine Watteau, a Rococo pioneer and individualist in the Frederickian spirit, and Watteau's work was represented. The library, Frederick's exclusive domain, was attached to his apartment, which included a study and audience room. The palace's oval-shaped marmor zal was the ballroom, although it seems women were never entertained there, and marble columns support a dome with stucco ceiling, decorated in acknowledgement of the arts and nature. Most of the references are classical. Its fittings and furnishings today are mostly contemporary with the palace, and the armchair where Frederick died remains in his study. From the palace forecourt, the Weinberg, actually a formal terraced vineyard for table grapes, drops away to the water feature Grossa Fontina, the hydraulics of which failed Frederick, and continued to fail, for 100 years. The colonnade on the north side of the palace framed a courtyard, and a line of sight to architectural follies on the hill Ruinenberg. Frederick then developed the oddest European port of the period, modest but earnest in philosophy and the arts and devoid of women. Frederick's queen lived in Berlin. Schloss Sanssouci remained Frederick's favorite spot and was his choice as last resting place. But it took more than two centuries for the remains of the king and his beloved greyhounds to find their way to the simple slab graves on the forecourt outside his apartments. The body had been moved about from its first resting place in Potsdam's garnison Quisha, which was wrecked in World War II, and found peace only in 1991. But travelers who pay their respects at the grave today, be it with roses or the potatoes the king had championed for his kingdom, are quick to bow to the royal prerogative. The location, and the view, are hard to match. Friedrich Ludwig Perseus and Ferdinand von Arnhem remodeled and plastered Schloss Sanssouci's household wings in the 1840s. In the west wing is the palace kitchen with its imposing stove and equipment from the 19th century. Schloss Sanssouci's modest proportions mean its epithet, the Prussian Versailles, is hardly apt. But the 290 hectare scale of its gardens, known as Parc Sanssouci, fits the comparison much better. Later Hohenzollern rulers added further buildings in the landscaped expanses. Nobelsdorf supplied the first plans for the Weinberg and immediate gardens around Schloss Sanssouci with features such as a garden grotto and an obelisk with mock hieroglyphics erected to mark the entrance at the Hauptallee. Later development took place along the spine of this main pathway. The ridges to the northwest of Schloss Sanssouci could exploit views. Several small island gardens were created around pavilions in the landscape. Today, it takes a detailed map to wander the key paths in search of the pavilions and sub-gardens. <laughs>